Have you ever wondered what games you should keep or you should lose? Find out here at Purdue's. Have you ever wondered what games you should sell or you should use? Find out here at Purdue's. Find out on our top 10 list what games you cannot miss. Don't forget to subscribe to Purdue's. Footsie the card game. This is a game I kickstarted. I'll be honest, just on the theme alone. Uh, the Bigfoot theme is just kind of interesting. I like the cartoon artwork. It's got the Simpson big eyes and just looked kind of neat. I probably didn't look into it enough to see what kind of game it was. I have a habit of doing that when I buy games. Um, I just don't want to pigeonhole myself into buying a certain type of game, so I try a bunch and I'm, I'm happy doing that. And I enjoy doing that with my gaming time. So um, I've had some complaints through my reviews that, you know, you don't like take that games. You don't like storytelling games. Why do you keep reviewing them? Because I want to like some of them. And maybe my particular viewpoint of, I don't like them, but I like this one. Or I like this one more. Or this one I didn't like at all. May interest somebody who's who's a gamer like me. Um, this game is a little too long for what it is. The box takes 60 to 90 minutes. It's just a quick... It should be a quick take that game. It's not. It. it I mean... You would never want to play this over a real board game. Um, it's rather simple to play. It's not very difficult. It's um, very easy to learn and teach. And, and the cartoons on it are very appealing to people. So people are going to like that. It's very interesting. Um, it's it's just another take that game. I don't think it's anything special. I don't think you're going to walk away from this saying how wonderful it is. I don't think it's going to interest you or having a lasting effect on your gaming time. It's just another take that game, which is increasingly becoming a dime a dozen. And then it comes in a bigger box than most, which is another downfall. It's silly that box size matters, but it does. It's not portable. It's only two deck of cards and some dice. I don't know why. I has to be big, I guess, for those professions, but whatever it is, uh, Big Footsie is going to be a miss for me. Here are the components for Big Footsies, the card game. You get a little bit bigger box than it needs to be, but some cute, like, Simpson-esque artwork. You are going to get a rule book. Very simple, very wordy, but very simple. You're going to get a number of dice. What's going to be kind of cool about these dice is going to be Bigfoot instead of a six. You get a Bigfoot. Neat. You get five of those, which the game plays up to six. There's not enough dice for all six players. You're going to get a bunch of characters. Wow, don't you want to be her? Or her? Or this guy? I know. We all want to be this guy, right? I get it. Anyway. A number of characters, more than six, and you're going to get a bunch of thingy cards. And these are going to be items that you can get. Equipment, items, hunting urine, doesn't look good, shenanigans cards. Oh no, you didn't! Run, Bigfoot, run! Okay, we're going to get a number of these. Very good quality shuffle. They all look kind of cute. I mean, the artwork on this is, is pretty nice. Here are your reference cards in case you can't remember how to play this game. I can't imagine you not knowing how to play. Okay. And here are the Woods cards. You know they're the Woods cards because they have a picture of Woods on the back. And this is what they look like. Ooh, Bigfootsy. Bigfootette. And you have Baby Bigfoot. Buff Bigfoot. Dragonfoot, Bigfoot's footprint, Deputy. All right, you get them. So you're gonna have events in here. You're gonna have Bigfoots in here. You're gonna have creatures in here. You're gonna have witches. You're gonna have all kinds of things. In the flow of the game, you kind of see how this works. You're gonna get two two decks of cards, five dice, some characters, and some reference cards. Those are components. Everything's good quality. I like the way these things feel. I mean, the quality is really good. I like these cards. They shuffle really well. 
They're the kind that when you get, they kind of stick together at first and you got to break them apart. But I like these, and these are good cards for me. So, good job. The rules for Big Footsie are, are rather clear. I mean, it's not a very complicated game. Um, there is a little imprecise with them with the range and some new terminology you got to put down, but not very complicated. I mean, you should be up and rolling in five minutes. It's not a very complicated game. Most of the rules of the game are on the cards, and that's how these games tend to, tend to be. So not a big deal with this. You should be able to pick this up and play it rather quickly. When the game starts, you're going to have a deck of thingies and a thing of woods. Each player is going to keep one of these professions. That will be the character they play. This can be random. The book says random, but you could pick it out if you want. So, I'm going to be the evil genius just because he's the coolest one if you ask me. This will be what we are. In a game, depending on the number of players, you're going to be playing to number of victory points. Two to four players is ten, five is eight, and six is seven. So what you do on your turn, it's very, very easy. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to range in the woods. You draw a woods card and announce, uh, and you just put it down here. So, And what this card is going to do, it's going to tell you you're going to need an eight in order to take over this card. And you're just trying to get these, these victory points, if you will. And there's all kinds of things that might be in here. There could be creatures or events. Uh, take the topmost Bigfoot from the woods, discard pile, and encounter it with a plus three to your skill. If there are no Bigfooties in the discard pile, you instead take the topmost Bigfoot from the draw pile. And you're going to see some witches. And <coughs> if a witch comes out, the gray wants the top cards on both the woods and thingies draw piles are now face up. These things just kind of stay in play until another witch card is drawn. What you'll do next is you'll go to work. Each of... The professions have different work. Take one, only one book foot out of your corral and place it in your doomsday device under this card. The book foot still counts towards VP is now considered protected. Now I'll do something different. I'll show you a couple. Free big footsies. Discard a card and pick any player who has more victory points than you. Roll a die, four, five, or six. He loses one captured big foot. Doesn't that sound like fun? Go to work, horde. Draw two thingy cards. Wow. Steal from a player, roll a die on five or six, you may take one equipment card. So that's what those things will do. And you can you can you can take advantage of your thing. Uh, you can only use these up till you have seven victory points and you can't use it anymore. Then you can rummage based on how many victory points you have, you'll draw some thingy cards and you'll start the game out with five of these. And these might be let's show you an item. Play before you range, you may select any Bigfoot. It's not you, it's me, it's shenanigans. Play this card when another player draws an event, you encounter the event instead. Confuse, minus three, play this card on any Bigfoot or creature during an encounter before the die roll. It's a negative three modifier. Master control, add one to your skill. So you have certain times, big handsies. You may not hold seven cards in your hand instead of five. Horse, you automatically escape from creature combat. So these things will work for you. And what, you, what you're really going to be trying to do, oh, at the end of your turn, you can always retrain and get rid of your profession and grab another one. What you're going to be doing, really, is you're going to be getting equipment, and so let me show you some equipment cards. So, lasso, add, add two to your skill, plus four if you are a rancher or a rustler. So, let's say you had equipment, you're going to roll the die, add up all your skills and equipment, and you're trying to see if you can catch the Bigfoot that's here. So, this guy would require an eight. So, three plus two is five. I would fail. And that's really all you're doing. Um, and you're cutting up these VPs and you're kind of screwing each other. I mean, you play played this game a million times. It's just to take that game. Um, you know, if you're lucky and you get some of these that work together, you're doing well. If the right ones come up and you score, it's great. Sometimes an event will come up and you can take their event. So all kind of little screwage going on. But on your turn, you're going to draw one of these woods cards. Uh, you're going to be able to use your profession. You're going to range if you want to, th draw some thingy cards, and try to play them to maximize your die roll and to add to your die roll or screw the other players out. That's that's big footsie. That's all there is to it, and it's a race to victory points. So, enjoy. Who should buy this game? 
probably fans of Munchie Game. I mean, if you like that sort of game or you're really into the Bigfoot theme, I really like the artwork. It's what drew me in. But, I mean, a 90-minute game, an hour and a half of, of this is just too long. I mean, when you're designing a game like this, you got to make a game like this rather quick. And you have to have those big moments. Now, I can't imagine a game like this going 90 minutes maybe with six players and you're just constantly screwing each other over. I mean, that is taxing to me. That's not what I would recall a good time at all. Um, juvenile players, teenage players maybe was like something like this. I could see a family maybe playing something like this, but it's going to go on really long. So, to each their own, try before you buy with Bigfootsies, the card game. Purge. Purge.